Okay, this is Unit G, Part 1, the cell membrane. And in this part of Unit G, we're considering the fluid mosaic model. And this model is a model to describe our cell membrane, made extra cute by this little diagram up here. So to understand this model, we first must recall some information from unit C, and this would be considering, remembering what a phospholipid molecule is, and now we need to go a little deeper with our understanding of this molecule. So this region of the molecule is the phosphate, and this part of the molecule has a polar personality, and <clears throat> as we learned with water, anything polar is going to be attracted to water. So this part of the molecule is referred to as hydrophilic. And these tails, that's a C down here, are the fatty acid chains. And these part, this part of the molecule is nonpolar, like a normal fat would be and they are going to be attracted to water, so we are, or sorry, repelled by water, and this would be hydro, mm. Let's see if I can make, yes, good, hydrophobic. So they are repelled by water, and that's one word. So, this personality, this dual personality, is really going to be important in understanding how we build a cell membrane. Because in building the cell membrane, if we just look up here quickly at this cute little diagram, we're going to put together two layers of these phospholipids. So let's go on to consider that. So the cell membrane is made up of two layers of these phospholipid molecules. And this is going to be referred to as the phospholipid bilayer. And phospholipid is just describing the molecule, so that's not too tricky. And bilayer is describing that there are two layers of these molecules. So phospholipid bilayer. And we can recognize, if we want to snazz it up a little bit, we can recognize right here are the polar regions that are going to be attracted outwards and inwards. So this, if this was the inside of the cell, the heads would be pulled in and the outside would be pulled out. And these nonpolar and hydrophobic tails are sandwiched in the center of the cell. And I'm meaning inside the cell. Okay, so we can look at a diagram one more time of our phospholipid <clears throat> and looking at it in three different ways just so we're used to seeing it and what it might look like when we meet it. So again, the polar head at the one end and obviously it looks like a little man who's lost his body right up here. Again, the important words, saying them several times, polar, and the tails would be nonpolar. And because they're nonpolar, they will be repelled by water. And again, right here, we can see the phosphate. Look with your eyes. Here's the phosphate. Again, polar. Here are the one, two tails. And one more model. There's the head. Here are the tails. So in the fluid mosaic model, there's two parts to the model. The fluid part of the model is going to be referred to, or referring to, the phospholipid bilayer. And a couple of reasons uh, that we it's given the word fluid. The word fluid, just like water is a fluid, if you think of when you drink a lot of water and you hear it, gushing around in your stomach, fluids have the ability to move. They are not uh, static. They're not like stone. They can move around. And if we look at these phospholipid molecules, 
we'll see that they are uh, not bonded together. So there's no bonds in here. They're just standing side by side. So like people standing in the line, not holding hands. There's no bonding. So they have the ability to move around. And that is going to be important considering that we're living and our cell membranes are, are part of important part of us and so they need some fluidity, some movement. So when we talk about the fluid mosaic model, the fluid part of the model is referring to, one more time, the phospholipid bilayer. So what is the mosaic part of the model? And that's what we want to consider next. So the mosaic part of this model is going to be proteins that are embedded within the phospholipid bilayer. So embedded proteins. And the embedded proteins are going to either cross, so they're going to be transmembrane proteins, so if we look down here quickly, right, we can see these would be transmembrane proteins, or they might just sit on the surface and these will be peripheral and they could sit either on the inside uh, or they could sit on the outside. So peripheral would be just sitting out here on the surface of, <clears throat> and in the diagram, if we look down below, the proteins will always appear solid and we can recognize, identify the phospholipid bilayer. So last thing we're gonna consider uh, is the different functions of these proteins that make up the mosaic part of the model. So again, the mosaic part of the model are the embedded proteins and the proteins are gonna have three different functions. One, they can be recognition proteins and these are going to be to identify the cell so in our body, we either recognize cells as being self, meaning they belong to us, or foreign cells, invader cells, are recognized as non-self. And this is going to assist our immune system in identifying cells that need to be uh, destroyed and cells that can stay. Second function of these membrane proteins are receptor proteins, and these are going to usually sit on the surface, so they would be peripheral. And these are going to receive chemical information. From the outside, so for example, a hormone uh, would travel through the bloodstream and bind to a receptor protein to signal the cell that it was time to do something. So receive chemical information from outside of the cell. And we said an example would be A hormone traveling through the bloodstream. Last example, and <clears throat> this example is probably the most important example because this is where we're going to spend the rest of the unit. So I'm going to make it three. These are going to be transport proteins. And these can either be channels. So a channel would be an opening through the cell membrane where a molecule could travel through, or they're gonna be carriers. And carriers are going to imply the expenditure of energy, 
and in the case of the cell, energy is always going to be ATP. So just to summarize, the three kinds of membrane proteins that we need to be aware of, their functions are for recognition. So recognition is uh, cells are identified at, as either belonging to ourselves or as foreign. A receptor protein is going to be involved in receiving information, chemical information, from the outside. And the last kind of protein will be a transport protein, which is going to be involved in either allowing something to passively move through it, in the case of a channel, or a carrier protein is going to be expending energy to carry, move a molecule across the membrane. Hope that helped.